Anyway, I've got some things. I got some emails here we might talk about. This might bring up some scintillating discussion. I don't know. It might fall flatter than a plate full of piss. We'll find out. But I got a couple of emails, Brian, from a couple of the listeners, obviously. If they weren't listening, they wouldn't send us the emails. And the first one, I thought this is worth bringing up because there's a couple of different takes on the same kind of thing. Fred writes, Dear Brian and Jim, he put you first. I don't know why. I was one of those people who watched the Wednesday night show so that I could enjoy your reviews more when I heard them. The aggravation associated with doing so now leaves me with less enjoyment as I listen to your reviews without having watched the shows, but it was a sacrifice I had to make for my mental health. As a person who discovered pro wrestling in 1973 when I left UHF Channel 47 on after roller derby one week, I can't help but pine for those glory days, which in my eye had already started deteriorating by the mid-80s, and he is correct. Looking at your review of AEW last week through these 70s eyes, I find the following examples of dichotomy within what ostensibly should be the same entertainment form remarkable. He has two things he's comparing. Number one. <laughs> what? what? I understood what he was saying there. Yes. I'm, I wasn't fucking breaking it down for you. I was, he didn't enumerate in the, in the sentence that I just read. I find the following examples of dichotomy within what ostensibly should be the same entertainment form remarkable. He didn't enumerate. Okay. So I said he has two, two things that he's comparing here. Two. You jump all over me. Ponderous. Number one. Will Hobbs' one-week face run prior to his heel turn versus Ole Anderson's 12-month pseudo-face run that was simply a ruse to set up his hated adversary. And two, Cody promoting the fact that he is office versus guys like Vern Gagne, who no doubt went to elaborate extremes to kayfabe his position, realizing that if it ever became public knowledge, the concept of he as top babyface would be discounted and downright mocked. And Fred closes with thinking back to roller derby and what pro wrestling was versus is now, I am left with another 70s memory, this one musical. It's better to burn out than it is to rust. You know, Vern was more than content with being the biggest star, owning the territory, and letting Wally Carbo take all the heat. Uh, good and bad. Let Wally Carbo be the face of the company. Exactly. Cody wants people to know that he's an executive. These guys all want people to know that they're executive. Well, I was about to say, don't single him out. No, no, no. Like the other ones are shying away from it. And it also, it was the it was on purpose that Tony Khan was proud to announce this, which. It, it makes no sense to announce wrestlers as part of owners and or executives of the promotion that they are wrestling in because then well wouldn't you know who won the pony but they were proud of it because they never tried to give the impression of credibility to begin with they're very proud that they got health insurance and the other guys didn't <laughs> uh, but anyway but that's uh, not only that but the the biggest thing was as we mentioned, Will Hobbs had, what, one match on television and, and two or three saves, one that he was late on and the danger had already passed uh, as a baby face. And they did, they did a package. They talked about him nice for a couple weeks. He had a match, and suddenly his heel turn is, uh, oh, my God, the shocking incident. Ole switched baby face. Stayed baby went through multiple babyface programs with different people as his partners against other heels that he cycled in and out, but never teamed up with or had interaction with Dusty for as as the famous Probo went uh, over a year, and then finally he asked me. He asked me to be his <laughs> partner, and they pulled the trigger on a thing and only switching boom, and there you go. And Dusty didn't look stupid. The guy had been trustworthy to every single one of Dusty's friends without hint of, you know, a, a backstabbishness for over a year. The people were cheering only the wrestling fans in Georgia. They loved him because he was a fucking great psychologist. So he could, as long as he was beating up evil Russians and other, you know, fucking dastardly heels, the grumpy old man was a wonderful baby face. 
but it it, it, it <laughs> I love Babyface Holy, by the way. Yes, it, it's so and he was a fun smart to watch. ass, and yeah. it was it was good. Yeah, <laughs> but that's the thing is they spent time with it because they knew that well, there's no reason to do it if it's not going to get over, and if you just do things every couple of weeks, they don't get over. They understood the the things were not these guys on these programs because they've seen these things on television or they've heard about them or they've been told stories in a locker room or I remember when I did or whatever they they do they they do things they do moments they do incidents but they do them in such a rushed fashion or without the proper people in place or the fact that the guy wasn't over to begin with because he was so new and they assume that everybody watches their TV every week. Or that that they have time to, and that brings them down to their most hardcore, devoted audience. Other people have things that they need to do in their lives, and they might miss the show every once in a while. Which is why you reinforce things without just have taking a step forward every week. Sometimes you pause and let people catch up and reinforce what's already been done. And over a period of, I mean, the period that it takes to get a guy over is has never been longer in the business and the period that's actually devoted to that has never been shorter in the 70s in the territory days the rule of thumb with the promoters was you get tv in a market you run tv for 12 weeks then you run your first house show well fuck 12 weeks now nobody even knows you're alive it used to be it was only three or four stations in a market now there's hundreds uh, as Ring of Honor found out, they were on Sinclair for quite a while before they started picking up new followers. Uh, not only that, but as far as a wrestler, you used to be able to bring a guy in to the territories and give him wins on TV for four to six weeks every week and let him talk, and then boom, you put him in main events. Now it's six weeks. Nobody knows he's alive yet. You can bring some guys in every once in a while and make a big impact. But if you bring everybody in with the idea of making an impact at the start of their run then and their debut, then you're making no impact because you're doing something splashy with everybody. A lot of times you just need to bring somebody in and put them on TV and put them in a paint them in a, a positive light and get them over and get them wins. And nobody gets that anymore. But that's the way to get out. So Whereas it used to be quick, but the promoters would take their time. Now it's fucking takes longer than ever. And the promoters rush everything. So boom, here's a second email. Well, hold and, on. I want to just say, because. Okay. It's the, the same kind of thing. Well, but the, go ahead. On the topic of Will Hobbs and everything you said is right. Another example from the same feud. Cody confronts Taz. And that's when all of a sudden we get this reveal that Taz's son is training with Cody. Oh yeah. Did you see? And then the kid right away is back with Taz. There was no like weeks long of I wanted my son back or anything. It was just all of a sudden he walked back to the back with his dad. And that was it. Now he's part of Team Taz. And in a backstage pre-tape this week, there's see, you see who's back. You're the guy that we never knew until last week was gone. <laughs> Oh fuck! If that's uh, see, they've seen these things, but it's it's Russo, it's Russo hitting somebody with a coconut because he he saw Snuggett. He don't know what led up to it. He don't know what happened afterwards. 